Hey guys, it's Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the hive on a Wednesday night. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. Um, I am leaving officially for Florida tomorrow morning and the only thing that's <laughs> standing in the way of me packing <laughs> is getting more stamping stuff done. <laughs> like always, Tyler always teases me because he says it's never done. <laughs> and that is a very true statement. And he tells my mom that all the time because it's just one more card and one more this and one more that. Hi, Alan Brover. Hi, Carla Lake. <laughs> so, oh yes. So I fortunately was able to get laundry done since Sunday. <laughs> and I told Tyler he needs to mark yesterday down in the record books. Hi, Bonnie Kelly. Thanks for sharing. Uh, because, and he goes, why? Uh, I said, because I actually did my laundry and put it away on the same day. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. Definitely a lot warmer down where you guys are than I am here with like negative 13 degrees. Hi, Randy. Hi, Kathy King. Hi, Sue Somerville. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Jewel. Wow, you guys are all rolling in. Hi, Judy Bobo. So, yeah, <laughs> it's always just one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. And that's just because the list never goes away. <laughs> it always, when you get one thing done, like five more, replace it, right? <laughs> hi, Cindy Rundry. Hi, Terry Costin. So, hi, Carmen Melendez. I have your package all ready to go. It's sitting actually um, over there. I see it. I'm going to actually be taking it. So Tyler's picking, well, taking me and picking up my mom. And then I'm going to be putting it in the mailbox on the, my way out of town. <laughs> so it's going to be on to your door in a few days, I think. Hi, Ann Bellinger. Hi, Laura Sullivan. And there's Carla Cordes. Woohoo, Holly. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Arliss. So we have one more card making class. Well, for me, until next week. Kelly's actually going to be doing paper pumpkin tomorrow night. So Carmen, you had asked about the January paper pumpkin. Hi, Linda. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Laura. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Deanne. Uh, I think I may have one more paper pumpkin and it would be yours, Carmen, if I do have it. I was billed for a paper pumpkin this morning and that surprised the heck out of me. And I think that it's extra at this point because Elaine got hers, Kat got hers, and um, Janet got hers. And with one more billing, that means it hasn't shipped. So Carmen, if that is in, that, in fact true, um, that one would be yours. So hang tight on paying me for it until I know for sure. Hi, Susan. Hi, Betty Ray. There's another Holly. Woo Hi, Mary Carls. Hopefully your internet works good tonight, Mary. Hi, Deb Norman. Deb, <laughs> um, let's chat about your embossing after class tonight. I was going to call you, but it was like quarter to six. And I thought maybe not the best idea to call you right before in case it like leads me right up <laughs> into class. So you were on my note, like my list to call yet. So, oh yes. Thanks for sharing everybody. I so appreciate it. You guys, I did make it on my lunch hour. It was a little bit earlier. I was definitely not the procrastinator. I was in my planning a game, <laughs> which probably threw some of you guys off <laughs> because I went live at like 1115. Uh, and so if you missed the replay of my cards showcasing the February cards, go back and watch the replay. I kept it to a half hour and it really goes through each class that I have coming up. And there's a lot of them, you guys. The only thing that I think that I forgot to actually um, show you were the bingo cards that I'm doing next week, which is actually an in-person only event. My bingos are always in-person only. When I do game nights, that's when those are online only. So I'll flip the camera down really quick. Um, <laughs> Christine's in a freezing Michigan. Yes. <laughs> so Deb, yours billed yesterday and should be arriving Monday too. So I'm thinking the one that I have extra that I'll save for you, Carmen, is one that my credit card failed because, of course, my credit card was compromised a couple weeks ago. Somebody wanted to spend $2,800 at a liquor store and Amerham, American Aviator, well, bleh, bleh. it's my American Airlines Aviator credit card. And I tried to say that all different ways. They called me and said, did you make that purchase? I'm like, no, I actually gave up alcohol for like the last three weeks. So it's kind of funny that I got the charge like that. So, uh, yeah, so my credit card failed. And so I had to go into the account and update it. And I think that's the one that was extra. So hi, Margaret, Rika. So let me flip down. So the only class that I, um, so if anybody's local to me and wants to attend a Valentine's Day bingo, we play um, six games for fun. 
with prizes. Um, hi, Barbara, Gabby. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Joanna. And we make two cards and you get a door prize. And so these are the two cards. I don't generally make the cards in advance, <laughs> but with going to Florida, you guys, and because it's not an online class, I don't really advertise it much. Um, yes, exactly, Deb. It is good they called me. So this is a little pocket card. We're going to make this one. So no, I know some of you are signed up for this class already. So that's one of them, a cute little Valentine's Day card. And you guys, I have never used this stamp set. It's called Count On Me. And I have been wanting to case it. One of my fellow stampers made a card using this with this frame like this, like completely different like occasion theme. But I held on to that card and I'm like, oh, goodness we get to make it for valentine's day look it says happy to have you in my life and two cute little koala bears and so i those are the two cards for in-person bingo next week sorry to tease you guys that aren't local but <laughs> if if so i plan for 12 if I don't have 12 sign up and I have an extra set of card kits i will find a time to do a facebook live and make those cards live with you sue somerville i am going to venice florida um my aunt and uncle have a condo down there. It is about 20 minutes from Sarasota, maybe an hour, a good hour and 10 minutes from Tampa. So I fly into Tampa. Hi, Mary Gunn. Uh, so uh, we leave at the butt crack of dawn, <laughs> literally. We have to leave here at quarter to five, uh, pick up my mom and Tyler's taking us to the airport and then my dad is picking us up. So that worked out good. But yeah, uh, so a guy, Adam at work was teasing me. He's like, so wow, you're going to set your alarm really early. I'm like, yeah, am I going to go to bed tonight or not? That is the question. But hmm, so I don't go to bed till everything's done. But last night, you guys, I, uh, we didn't end up having a fire after dinner. We ended up doing work around the house. So I got the dishes done. I got the laundry put away. I got the kitchen cleaned and the bathroom cleaned and the living room. Okay, I know it was date night, but Tyler was like, just do what you gotta do. And he goes, but you're in a really crazy cleaning mode. Like this was at nine o'clock last night. And I said, yeah, like, don't you notice that every time before I go on a trip, I just have to make sure the house is in order because don't you guys hate coming home to a house that isn't like kept up? Like, like you guys like that are watching me now, like, don't you agree with me? Like, wouldn't you rather have things picked up and tidied before you left than having to deal with it when you get home? Because who wants dirty laundry and dirty clothes or dirty dishes to put away and like wash when you get home? So yeah, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna do it tonight. So <laughs> sorry, date night kind of had half date night, half a little bit of work. So, but I think you guys can relate. So it was like, oh, it was such a relief to get all that stuff done. So, okay. So speaking of that, like the reason the bingo cards are actually designed a week in advance is because I come home on Tuesday and I have class Wednesday night. So Yes, Deb, you agree with me, and Holly does too. It is so good. Okay, so you guys, I am going to show you some swap cards. I have for my team swap party on Sunday, and I have the customer swap for the month of January. Uh, I'll show you those. Uh, a reminder that if you missed the walkthrough on February cards, make sure to look for that. The scavenger hunt is due on the 31st. Uh, Danny Olson, I got yours uh, yesterday, so I have that all printed. Um, yes, Carla, you clean before you go to. See, I'm not alone. So I'm like, Tyler, didn't you ever notice that about me? We've been dating for four years. The house is always clean before I go on a trip. <laughs> so maybe he should send me away more often that the house doesn't like <laughs> have four months before it gets cleaned or five months. <laughs> Hi, Marsha again. Oh, man. Okay, so the scavenger hunt is there till the 31st. Um, please send it to me if you haven't sent it yet after you've completed it. I'm going to take the ones that I have with me. Um, oh, I should tell you guys who I have in case um, I'm missing anybody. Um, I'll run through all the ones that I got recently. I know like four or five people sent them to me um, again for those that I missed over the last like weeks. So hi, Elaine Rebeck. Um, I have a favor to ask for those people in my VIP group. Um, so I went in there to get the names for doing the drawing for the half off bundle. And I cannot find that post anywhere. I searched for sweet talk. I searched for sweet conversations. I searched for half off bundle. I searched for video showcasing and I couldn't find that video. So every month I share the walkthrough of what class cards are coming up for the next month in my VIP group. And then I say, this is the post where you should comment that you shared it so that you can be in the drawing. Um, 
that will be me next week. Yes, because Deb, you're leaving for Key West. Woohoo! Um, yes, Judy. So Tyler, because Tyler doesn't live with me, but he stays here when I'm gone. So he house sits and he grabs my mail and any UPS packages from Steal It Up, and he keeps it clean. I mean, he might leave dishes in the sink, but I can handle dishes in the sink. <laughs> so, um, hi, Sherry Martin. So. I need a favor from those people that are in my VIP group. I need you to help me hunt <laughs> and search for that post. And if you find it, like tag me in it so I can see it. I have no idea why I can't see it. Hi, Cheryl Thomas. So sad news is, is I have this bundle right here and I haven't had the ability to pick a winner to get it at half off because I couldn't find the post to find all the names to do the drawing. So I need your help. So I'm gonna set that off to the side and then, um, that's okay newsletter you guys it's can you believe it it's already the end of the month so in a little plan and preparation for the newsletter i always try to get it out around the first or the second of the month but with being in florida till tuesday my goal is probably to have the newsletter to you guys by friday of next week because on thursday we'll do the drawing hi linda hall we'll do the drawing for the top fan for the monthly creative challenge for the class card challenge we'll do any other things that we have drawings for. <laughs> so maybe by then I'll have all the scavenger hunts graded and I can announce the winner for that too. So then my plan is on Friday to have the newsletter complete with all the winners listed in it. Hi, Hildenel. So that's a little update for the newsletter in case you guys are looking for it. Don't look for it on the first, second, or third, okay? Um, after the class is done, you guys, I have the celebration board and it is full and I have a few names waiting to get added to the next board. Uh, I had a small, small class on Monday with two people and I thought about it as we were leaving and I didn't want to keep them longer just to, to do the celebration and I thought, oh, we'll do it live on Wednesday night anyways. So, so we're going to do that and we'll do the drawing for the people who ordered for class tonight. So people who place orders to get the class for free, I'll put you guys in for a door prize drawing for that. So I haven't figured out my lighting. If you haven't figured that out yet, I still have this halo -y thing over here. <laughs> I'm like, which light is it? I haven't figured that out. So I'm like, the lights have been in a disarray since the winter creative escape and there's that halo. So anyways, you guys, I also have a couple of cards I want to show you for happy mail and we'll give away the cards from the celebration catalog launch party. All right. So lots of stuff to do. Um, but before we do that, hi, Debbie Schultz. Cause I know you guys like to see swap cards. So before we start class, I'm gonna show you guys some swap cards. So let me move this out of the way and show you guys some cards, the, the, the cards, swap cards, these and over here. I have, I don't have a lot. I do have just a few. So I'm gonna put this down and then I'm gonna go get my scavenger hunts. And you guys can start perusing those. Okay, so I also, so what I'll do with the scavenger hunts is I'm just going to list off whose I have. And then if I didn't call your name, then you know that somewhere I missed it along the way. Okay, so I have that now. Okay, so team swap party. Hi, Robin. Team swap party um, from, so my team, the Be Happy Stampers, uh, they can choose to participate in an extra swap that I host uh, when it comes time for a new catalog. Um, Debbie Schultz, you can still turn in your scavenger hunt until the 31st, but if you do it today, I can print it off before I go to Florida and take it with me to grade it. Yes, I'm going to grade them while I'm on the beach somewhere, freezing my tush off. <laughs> so my team can participate in, I do three swaps a year, um, each with a new catalog. And so the team swap party was uh, this last Sunday and I had maybe seven participating and there's three different groups. And um, there is um, celebration, uh, single stamp sets, and then bundle stamp sets. And you can choose to be in all three, or you can pick and choose which ones you want to do. So that's what I'm going to show you first. Uh, so let's go there. Okay. So these were from Carissa Alberts. She chose the Swallowtail stamp set, um, actually bundle. You guys, Oh, her cards make me want to buy the Swallow set. It's uh, This little guy is so amazing how she put them together and she embossed on the Mother of Pearl 
designer paper here with the splattery embossing folder. And I'm wondering if you guys can see that texture. It looks bumpy. Do you see that it looks bumpy? Okay, that's the mother of pearl paper. And then she made it into a pocket card. Hi, Becky from Livonia, Michigan. And she's got the um, New Horizons designer paper. Look at all these pretty little flowers that she put together. Hi, Denise. And so that was that Swallow set. Swallow Tales is, I think, the name of it. So, yeah, um, I wasn't going to get it. It wasn't one of the ones that I, like, so excited about. But now that I see her beautiful cards, I couldn't help myself. And it will be added to my wish list. She loves doing the ink blending with alcohol blends. And that's what's the background here. And then Anna Rebidoux had the, oh, what's it called? Oh, she's got it here. Seize the day. I'm like, I knew it's something with seas. And gentle waves got used on this one. Uh, so there is, this is a fun fold. I have a hard time getting it in and out, but it's one of these cards. It actually fits down to an A2 size card. And then when you look at it, soaring swallows. <laughs> Thanks, Carissa. You guys, correction, correction. It's called soaring swallows, but I feel like there's something with swallowtails somewhere. That's why I thought that. Okay. So, um, Oh, Deb Norman, this is the only post I have found. So maybe uh, you didn't find it. Hmm. So this one's from Anna and she's got these little, um, the fish and the octopus on window sheets. And so as you open it, they move. So isn't that super cool? Very, very cool. And it folds down to an A2 size card. And then this is another one that she made and she did watercolor paper with this one and then blended color on the back and it has a little sand hill using craft paper. Uh, it looks like just jade, misty moonlight, and craft paper. So very pretty, Anna. This one was from Cheryl Taylor. She's actually moved down to Florida for the moment, um, and I don't think I'll catch up with her because she's on the other side of Florida, but she chose the Paradise Palm set, and she went with a day card and a night card, and super cool how she used the black die cuts out of these uh, December. Oh, Deanna Stell found it. Yay. Thank you guys. I'll do that drawing later on and then I'll announce it in the post that I do in the morning who got that one. So but very pretty card, Cheryl. She used the bark embossing folder there as well. And lots of different ink blending back there um, with sponge, sponges or blending brushes. Uh, Melanie Hao did a ladybug card. And this guy has... Um, well, you guys might remember this one from like maybe a mystery card layout. So she has, I love it how she lined up the two die cuts here um, and found it as well. So you take me in and I should be able to see it. Um, the Flowering Fields Designer Paper. You guys, now if you can't tell what Stella is when I do it, look what Melanie did. You see how shimmery right there that ladybug's wings are? That is what Stella does when you Stella it up. <laughs> All right, so that was from the bundle swap. And then there were two others with the celebration. This one was Carissa's card. She did the awesome otter set. This die cut is from the Seize the Day. So you remember Anna did it back here. So I own that set. I haven't used it yet, but that's that same die cut. And then she took Pacific Point paper. And I believe what you said is... Um, you did masking with white ink, and that's how you made it look like the sun was shining down on the little cute otter. And then this one was also an otter, and this is from Anna Rebidoux. And this one, um, is this like a gatefold? And so she's got these three panels. Two are glued down here, one is glued here, and then there's strings holding the balloons. The balloons come from Hippo and Friends. Hi, Teresa Carls. Um, Carmen, I'm watching along with you and I didn't see me freeze. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> that well, I'm not frozen. And then it opens like that. So it's kind of like a gatefold and it says, let's celebrate you. And then when you shut this, so the otter is attached over here and then you shut it and you've got the strings that hold that down. So very cool card for Anna. And then the rest of these were, um, single stamp sets. So this was the best delivery and Cheryl did hers. I know, Hilda. So I have that C die. I've got that slated for a class card, I think in May or April or March. I can't remember, but later. <laughs> so hi, Millie Kindle. So she made a delivery truck and says, sending lots of love today and each day after. And then she made it into an easel card. And she made it look like that um, map paper from the layering vellum. 
and it's like the truck is driving on the road and then has the grass behind it and a beautiful sunshiny day behind. So lots of thought Cheryl put into this one and it's very pretty. All right, the next one is from Fancy Nancy Billets. Get in there, little guy. Okay, um, this one is in the moment. You guys, I don't use a soft seafoam a lot, but it really works well with this Black Ray Bliss and it makes me want to use it. <laughs> and she colored the dress and the wine and the hat to match uh, and used cinnamon cider blend for the table, stamped some birds, tasteful textile embossing folder, scalp contours dies. So pretty um, from that one. That was Fancy Nancy. This one was mine. You guys, I showed this to you guys last week. Hi, Sue Thomas. I went crazy on these little mini cards on <laughs> on a, like a, a card mat here. And so that was my You Make My Heart Go Beep from Nuts and Bolts. I added some of those faceted gems, gingham embossing folder. This one was from Carissa Alberts. She used the diorama dies. Um, Carissa, I don't remember the name of the set. <laughs> you're gonna have, you're still watching. But thanks for sharing, Sue, I appreciate it. Uh, Chris, if you're watching, let us know. I, I can't remember where the monkeys come from off the top of my head. Um, some classic matte dots, and she did her ink blending again. So cool. She's in love with that, and I love it when she uses it. <laughs> so this one is from Anna Rebidou. This one is called Kite Delight, and she used Magenta Madness and those um, the dot borders dies that have clouds and sponging and adding color. So you guys, wait for this. So she's got a little Velcro dot right here and then it opens up and it's catch you later. Thanks, Carissa. So this set is called catch you later guys. And then this one is kite delight. Your friendship is so uplifting. She cut a little Velcro. So she called me one day and she's like, I made this card and I don't know how to keep it down. <laughs> and we talked about it and she ended up with a little triangle of Velcro and that holds it. And she used some white baker's twine and then she used some of that organdy white ribbon and made these little ties on the kite string. Isn't it adorable? So, so cool. Um, and last but not least is Ann Miller's card and she used New Horizon. New Horizon. And she put in a little Just Jade bow. And um, on some of them, she actually took the linen thread and colored it with a cinnamon cider blend. And... Um, this one has, I think, maybe like a misty moonlight with Just Jade and some crumb cake or cinnamon cider ink and just created a little walkway to the beach. Isn't it cool? Hi, Barbara Moynan. So, yeah. So those were the team swap cards. So anybody that's on the Be Happy Stampers, I do that three times a year. So you can get in. the There are rules, though. <laughs> it's got to always be current stamping up product. It cannot ever be retired. It can't be anything not stamping up. And I know that deters some people because we don't always have everything current, but I use these cards in my business to you know, case off of and also to share with my customers. And so I always want to show current product. So that is one of the main guidelines. And then the other one is using a newer featured stamp set from the catalog that just launched. So hi, Karen Wetstein. Okay. So that's that one. And then I have from the customer swap. Now, I'll flip back. The customer swap is slightly different. I host the customer swap, but it doesn't have um, it doesn't have to be only Stampin' Up! product. It can be anything. There are guidelines to it. And if anybody ever wants to be invited to the Cards by Christine customer swap group, you just have to reach out to me and ask to be invited. Hi, Julie. Thanks for sharing. Hi, Lynn Beasley. Uh, and like one of the main guidelines is you have to at least use one new stamp set or um stamp that is current from Stampin' Up! and then one other Stampin' Up! retired anything. And then it's like no holes barred. It's like whatever. So um, so you're, that's why you'll, I'll show these to you and I won't know some of the things that are used on them because it could potentially not be Stampin' Up! So without further ado, this one is from Miss Anna Rebidou. Uh So pretty. Uh, very, very classic Valentine's Day card. Like she just went over the top with the gold foil, a gold metallic -y bow with the bl um, blushing bride that was retired, um, but such a pretty accent to this card. And then the gold foil love with gold embossing, just a striking card. So, so pretty. This one is from Miss Deb Norman, right? Deb, yep. So uh, it's a very striking card too with the foil accent using expressions and in ink, the hippo and dyes, 
some of the Pale Papaya Ribbon anniversary card. I do have themes. Every month it's a theme. So like this one was Valentine's Day, wedding, or anniversary. It was called Love is in the Air. Uh, this one is from Carol Alanis. I'm thinking that there's a special fold. So, mm -hmm. oh, it's Velcro. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Look, she Velcroed it shut. I was like, I didn't want to rip it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but cool. She put a little Velcro circle. I love it. So you guys, pull in those Velcro. There's some people who use magnets too to keep their stuff shut, but very cool card, um, Carol. This is from that Love and Laughter Bouquet of Hope um, Ensemble, the Sweet Talk Designer Series paper. And then we've got one here from Diane Rungi. And this one is, I want to say it's Rococo Rose. And wishing you much happiness today and always some of the celebration designer paper that was for free, I think, in August. So that's a very pretty card, too. And, oh, so Elaine, you just picked up your cards. Hopefully you, oh, I'm, I think, Elaine, do you look at one card every day? Is that what you do? I can't remember if I'm spoiling your fun right now. You guys, check out what Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin did. Oh, my goodness. So... Oh, she did the lamb technique around this heart and it's so exquisite in person. It just makes it so nice. It's just so pretty. Oh, be my Valentine. I didn't even see the inside till right now. And she has them popped up. Oh my gosh. So cool. So a little embossing folder on the back and a very pretty um, die cut heart on the top. And it says, love you. So cool. So very cool. All right. So that was Kathy Jackson's. And hi, Catherine. I should say cat. <laughs> and this one is from Miss Elaine Rebeck. So pretty. Another Valentine's Day card. I can't remember where that heart came from, but um, the happy anniversary is current. I'm pretty sure. Stitch so sweetly dies that she pulled in here. And love you the most. Combination of the grays, reds, and pinks. So it's perfect Valentine's Day card. Mm -hmm. Elaine says it's okay. She loves the cards. Good. <laughs> I didn't want to ruin your, your, how you do your <laughs> looking at your swap cards. All right. This one is from Cindy Bowie. You guys, can you see it's all Valentine's Day theme? She did the paper strip like technique where there's four different designer papers. And, um, oh, it's a felt. It's actually red felt. And then a little bit of a die cut love on there. And the best things are in life are they're sweet. And so you guys, one of my rules when I do, it's my rule, it really is. I want stamped, completed inside, right? I do not like swaps that the cards are not complete on the inside because they're not matted and they're not stamped. Hi, Alice from cold Indiana. And last but not least is Tabitha Lawson. And she did the gingham embossing folder back here and some of the hearts that we're gonna be using tonight. These are actually, it feels like they're designer series paper. And a little gorgeous grape bow and little hearts on the inside. So very cool. All right. So that's what I have. Hi, Melanie Foy. That's what I have for the customer swap. So you guys, we only had eight that participated um, in the month of January. So this one fluctuates between maybe eight and 16 people. Um, the sign up is always by the 31st, or I should say the last day of the month. And then the cards are due to me by the 25th of the month. And so that's why these are all ready. And those that have the mail to them, they went in the mail today. And those, Cindy, you can come pick up yours, Cindy Bowie. And Elaine, you got yours. So, okay, so that's those. And then I have a few more little bits. Hi, Lisa Nealon. Hi, Melanie Foy. Okay, so this one is from Carol Alanis. She sent me a thinking of you card, and it uses that calming camellia. Do you guys, if you watched my um, showcase today for what's coming up in February, you will notice that this resembles mine because I got the idea from the catalog, and so did she, is what I would imagine, doing the heart and putting the calming camellia in the background. So very cool. Um, so that was a special card from Carol. This one was a special card from Margie. Um, I, she sent me a little card with some money for a class. Thank you, Margie. This one is from, oh man, I gotta look at the note here really quick. I, Linda, yes. The Linda sent me a belated birthday card. I think you're watching, Linda, so I appreciate that. I love how you did 
um, like you color, you stamped it and then you just picked one and you colored one and spotlighted the one. Very pretty card, Linda. I love it. And this one's from Kathy. Yay, Kathy. Lots of love notes in there. <laughs> Kathy, I love your handwriting. It reminds me of, um, my grandma. So you have such perfect, perfect cursive. And my grandma did too. And the, the, the long cursive. And so every time I get a love note from you, you make me think of my grandma. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so there is something about the penmanship that we learned, um, you know, starting way back, how many, many years ago. And it carried through, I think me till me. So I still write in cursive, but my, you guys know, if you get cards from me, my, my cursive is sloppy. Um, but there is a, the, there is an age group, um, that has that perfect cursive. And, um, there was somebody else too, that sent me a card and I'm trying to remember who it was, but it, it was like, it looked like my grandma's writing was just perfect cursive penmanship. And so when you see that, it's like, it makes you think of people. So thank you, Kathy. <laughs> um, so she sent me a little bear card that says love on it. So I love it. Hi, Jeannie Parker. This one came from, let's see here, here, Ellen. Oh, Ellen is a beautiful card, um, Knight of Navy. And I think we were looking at your card. I shared it with Diane and Nancy at class the other night because they were in awe. What we think you did is used washi tape, put it on your card, and then you embossed it with the Tasteful Textile Embossing Folder because it's like this washi tape is ingrained into the paper. And we were trying to think, Naughty Nancy and I looked at each other and we're like, we both own this die set and it has this pretty design to it. And, um, we couldn't remember the name of it, but we, I still have it. I still own it, but I couldn't tell you what the name of the die set is. So if you're watching, you could pop it and tell us because inquiring minds were inquiring. <laughs> so very pretty card, Ellen. And this one came from Kelly, um, it, Kelly Atchison, actually my upline. I was in the top 10 for the month of December. So this was the card she sent me for uh, being in the top 10. So it is an easel card with a calendar on it. So yay. Okay, you guys. We made it through. Okay, so I know that took a little bit, but I knew that if I did not do that tonight in with class, I don't know when I was gonna pop in and do it separate. So I thought I'd take an extra maybe 15 minutes and share those cards with you because you guys love seeing cards. I know this. Every time I ask should I or not, you always say yes. And you always say do it now. <laughs> so I've learned to just do it now. <laughs> um, so we're gonna start then with the, oh, scavenger hunts really quick. So. I have the scavenger hunts here from Miss Kathy Groves. I have uh, Stacy Burns, Lou Ann Johnson, Barb Johnson, Anna Schaefer, Sue Volt. Hi, Julie Ledbetter. Um, Judy Bobo, I have yours. Anna Revedu, Chris Dudarenki, and Elaine Rebeck, Carmen Melendez, Kathy Jackson, and Deb Norman. So, if I did not call off your name, I apologize. If you send it to me, I try my best. <laughs> but when they come at me in all different directions, and ultimately I have to get them into a paper form because I'm not grading these on my phone, I would cry and never do a scavenger hunt like this ever again if I had to grade them on a phone. So I need to print them. And that means I have to either print them, send them to myself, or ask somebody else to help me print them if I'm not around my printer. <laughs> so, so if I'm missing it, please forgive me and please just resend it to me. And I think we got a bunch of people that way last time. So, so Lori says it was daily penmanship practice in school. And if the circles or the lines weren't at the correct slant or the sloppy, we had to start all over. Filling. Yes, I remember that. That's how cursive was for me too. Like I remember second grade, we had this lined paper and you had to have everything just perfect. And you know what? I am so sad because they don't even teach cursive in school anymore. And it makes me upset because no, <laughs> I think it's so pretty to see cursive. So, and the writing is awesome. All right, you guys, I'm grabbing my books and we're going to get started with class tonight and we're going to do roll call. All right. I did a little investigating and I think I have five kits left actually. So what happened was I, I was out of what I originally started with for uh, um, online but I had extra for my in-person. So I converted the in-person kits to be online, merged them together, and I believe I have five sets left. And Holly, I am in the same boat with you. <laughs> so go. It was good <laughs> to, to have good writing, right? Um, okay, so I have five left. So in case you're watching tonight and you're interested in a set of kits, you just have to reach out to me. I can get them out in the mail to you yet. I'll get it ready tonight so it'll mail out tomorrow. 
Oh, yeah. So one thing I learned about checks, Judy Bobo, is that the because cashiers have a hard time reading the check. What I've learned is that the handwriting part is actually only for the benefit of if you can't read the numbers and that they're technically supposed to go by the numbers. Um, yeah, Deb, I know they don't learn. Oh, flourish, then the dies. Yes. Okay. So perfect, Ellen Brover. That is exactly it. The flourish, then the dies. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, Kathy, you're a retired teacher. I don't know if I knew that. Ah, oh, a positive impact on brain development. Yes. And why are we stopping it, you guys? That's what I don't understand. <laughs> uh, yes, Ellen, it came with the paper similar to Boho. I definitely, I, I, that was like four years ago, I think. So, okay, roll call, you guys. Susan Risch, Angela Knutson, Deanna Stell, Debbie Schultz, Barb Moynan, Sandy Wicklander, Leslie McMinn, Laura Sullivan, Debbie Schultz. So, you guys, I have my Debbie Schultz and my Debbie Schultz tonight. <laughs> I can, I haven't confused you guys yet that it's made a mistake, but I, I have to always double check with you girls when you sign up on the same class. <laughs> Linda Hunt, Kathy King, Cindy Runtree, Ruth Nicholson, Judy Immel, Ann Bellinger, Tammy Steckling, uh, Carmen Melendez, Elaine Reback, Jennifer Jones, Ellen Brover, Carolee Crabb, Carla Cordes, Jolene Shry, Mo Stites, Judy Bobo, Lynn Beasley, and Cheryl Thomas. Um, Ellen said, my almost 20 years old cannot even sign his name. Oh, that is sad. That is so sad. I think we need to rally and get cursive back in the schools. So I think that's everybody. So I, I show a total of 27 people that did online. Jody Storman, you were supposed to come in person and we switched you to online. So technically you're online as well. So that's good. And a bunch of you are here watching. Um, what I always tell people, if, if you're watching class, um, you're always, oh, and Ruth Nicholson's here as well. Perfect. So if you have any questions throughout the class, make sure to ask them. Uh, I know that I am a fast card putter together. <laughs> so don't let that ever discourage you. Know that this video will live on forever in Facebook as long as Facebook is around. <laughs> I don't know if Facebook ever disappears. I have every video saved in YouTube as well. And I also have every video saved in my computer. So <laughs> they're not going anywhere. Um, and if you ever can't find the video, don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Um, you can always search for it in the magnifying glass. And the other thing I don't know if a lot of you guys know is that in my website, if you know the day of the class, if you go to my calendar of events and you go backwards and find the actual day, I always go back and add the links for YouTube and Facebook as the first lines on the description. And you can, you can't like click on them, but you can copy and paste them into your browser. So like, let's say you're like, oh shoot, I just found the September monthly cards from September, uh, but you knew what day it was. Um, you can go back to my calendar of events for September 16th, maybe if that's when it was and then find the video and watch the video that way. Or if you have the PDF, I try to reference them in there too. Hi, Alice from Logan's Spot. <laughs> All right. Oh yes, Elaine's my teacher too for 35 years. Yeah, we need to keep cursive. All right, we need to rally for that, you guys. I don't know how to, to where to start, but <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of other fish that they're frying right now. Um, what is my method of payment? So Marsha, my method of payment is everything. <laughs> um, if you do wanna pay with a credit card, I have a website for that. And it charges a convenience fee uh, for processing credit cards. And you just go into the event, select it, add it to your cart, and you have to check out and pay for it. Uh, the other thing is I do offer cash options. Cash meaning you pay me with Zelle, PayPal, friends and family, Venmo, Zelle, Facebook Pay. And the reason that I, I give a cash price is because you're giving me a, a money without being charged a fee. So it's actually saving you money, not me necessarily, because I would um, you would pay higher if you paid with your credit card. So, so Marsha, lots of ways. And if you're ever um, questioning, just send me an email and we can chat about that too via email and figure it out from there. So I think I need a drink of water before we go, you guys. I think I've been long-winded for a long time already now. Hmm. Oh, water is nature's drink. I love it so much. Okay. A fun fact about me is that I hated drinking water. The only way I would drink water is if it had um, one of those packets, whatever, the Nutri or something. Uh, what, was Nutri what, what was like pink, not Kool-Aid, but like there was Crystal Light. That's what they were. And I, like my friend Soledad would just chug, 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 chug water. And she'd give me crap because I couldn't drink water because it needed to have flavor. Well, so a guy that I dated for eight years got me off of that habit of drinking water with like Crystal Light or sugar-free Kool-Aid. 
and he got me just drinking straight up water. And now it's like, huh, oh, if you, if I need anything, I'll drink water and I can be drinking warm water and I don't need ice cubes in it. So there you go. Fun fact about me. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to flip down you guys. We're going to get the party started. Okay. All right. Eight to 10, page eight to 10 is where we're going to find the sweet talk right here. It is a sweet, <laughs> the sweet talk suite. And it includes the sweet conversations bundle a gingham embossing folder, the sweet little boxes, iridescent rhinestones, um, the real red faux linen ribbon, and then also the designer series paper. So that's what's all in here. And the next page has bigger pictures of the stamp set. Um, I don't think I really pulled in, I did pull in something from over here. This love and happiness bundle has a little die, a little baby incy tinsy little one. Hi Tabitha, and that got used there. That's where that guy came from. I did pull in some scalloped contour dies here. Um, and actually, Carissa and I, may, I think we did all these cards together. So Carissa was up one day back in December, and we designed some cards together. And this is where what we came up with. Um, this one is so awesome. It's so retro-y. It reminds me of my, no, not my kitchen. I didn't have a kitchen in the 70s, but it like a, <laughs> the KitchenAid mixer that was the Bermuda Bay color or Florida de Flamingo it, and then the little bit of black in there. Um, I did pull in a, a punch here as well. And this one pulled in the like painted seasons dies where that big label came from. And this one pulled in stitched rectangles and the time-worn embossing folder. But otherwise, the papers... Everything kind of came from the suite of products. The supple shimmer ribbon got pulled in as well and different ribbons as well, just not just that faux linen one. So a little close up of the Sweet Talk paper. So this is the DSP sampler. Um, and so use this piece, this piece, mm, this one right here. Like almost all of these got used between this class and then the monthly class that was last week. So, so that's what we got. And then here's what the bundle looks like. And the iridescent rhinestones are phenomenal. I absolutely love them. My favorite embellishment in the catalog. So, all right, let's get making some cards, you guys. All right, which one do we want to start with? We're going to start with this one. We'll get warmed up. How does that sound? All right. So we need, <laughs> I don't even know what I've got out going on for stamps here. So we got those guys. And that will pull. So this one has a, a Highland Heather base. It's all about the base. No trouble. Okay. So, um, ever wonder what you guys get, if you're new to me, what you get in card kits. So, this is an example of what comes in the mail. Um, like, this is a four-card class, all featuring product primarily from here. All the die cutting and embossing is done. So, you get a little slip of paper that has the name of the class, and I write your name on here. And... <clears throat> um, it says where you can find my replays of my videos and then you get the envelopes and like for example this is the card kit that where we're oh it's the first one of course <clears throat> so this is what comes in your card kit all the pieces that you need and some embellishments the ribbon anything die cut so like this is die cut it's all ready for you you just have to add stamps and ink and adhesive okay so in this case, it's a very easy card in terms of stamping. The only thing that's stamped on the outside, it says Happy Valentine's Day. And the ink that got pulled in for this one is the real red. And our inside looks, oh, I got a little pink heart. So I probably used maybe um, Blushing Bride. So we'll grab that. You could use blush, any kind of a light pink would work. <coughs> and I have here the big pink heart, which I think is in here at the moment. Oh, you guys know what's happening. It's time for these stamps to get some water action to get cleaned up. <laughs> when they start to not stick to the inside of the case, that means they need some um, washing. And then they get their goo back, or I should say their dust off. Okay, so what you have here is a Highland Heather base. And it's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Take that, fold it in half. I line up my... Corners. I did a tip Tuesday on that a little while back. Hold my corners down and I'll grab my bone folder and burnish the edges here. Now remember, this is a horizontal card. Oh, you guys, that's not current anymore. Ha <laughs> ha. And look here, I printed off the new one and I forgot to cut it. So I like to have this here for you guys just in case. But look, I was a slacker. 
but now it's there. Perfect. Wouldn't have even needed to print that. <laughs> Could have saved a piece of paper. Okay, so remember this is horizontal. So when we're stamping our inside, it's important to know that. So you have here in your kit a couple pieces that are mats. The largest mat that I have on the bottom in your kit, well, depending on how you open up your kit, I guess, but the bottom is usually the inside piece, and it's just a quarter sheet mat, so five by four and a quarter, and then you have a piece of white that goes on the top. The white measures four and three quarters by three and 11 sixteenth. There's me and my sixteenth. <laughs> and then my red, hi Kathy Groves. The red is four and nine sixteenths by three and a half. So it kind of nestles right in there. And the designer paper, there's four little strips that you have in your kit. Now this is where you can pick and choose if you want to change it up a little bit. There are backs to them, so you could look at them. That one wouldn't work so well because the font is going up and down. And this one could work if you want to see pink instead. That one's got some purple stripes if you'd like that. And then it's the hearts and some something on the back there. So what you can do is figure out how you want to order your hearts on your front here. This designer paper has these little word hearts things that are in every direction. So you want to be particular about how you see them. So like right here, if you put this like that, your cute is upside down, but it's okay because it would be covered up by the label. And then you'd see the big purple heart there. And otherwise here you have your cute at the top. Like all of you guys are going to be different layouts. Like you can see my card here looks a little different. And then do you want to see the sucker down here? Then maybe you'll put that over there. Um, this one, making sure your hearts are the right way, that they're going up and down. And this one really has no pattern to it. So I'm gonna break up my purples a little bit and go like that and have the your cute set up. I'll glue that in a second. This is your um, painted seasons tag. It's from that Christmas set that uh, was a super sweet in the holiday catalog. Hi, Anna Rebidu. It carried over and so that was die cut and embossed with the splatters embossing folder. You have a little red heart and an even smaller red heart. And then you have a little strip here that's about three eighths inch by three inch that gets put in here. Now, you guys might have it a little bit longer and you can cut it a little bit shorter. So this is um, adaptable. And then you have a piece of red of the faux ribbon. So this is what ribbon came in this suite. So for those of you who haven't gotten it yet, now you can see it, touch it, feel it before you buy a whole roll if you want. Okay. So that's everything that's in your kit, except for you do have some rhinestones. There should be like three rhinestones that were cut apart. You've got some small and um, a large one. Hi, Sue Sorrell. Oh, let's do our stamping first. So we need that and we need this. And we'll do real red for the happy Valentine's Day. And you guys should be excited. I put my piercing mat back in here. And we're going to use the... Happy Valentine's Day comes from this set. Um, hi, Janet Kaur. When you put it on your block, make sure your stamp is straight. And I got to get my head in here a little bit closer. <laughs> so the, the what's nice is that you have a gray background so that you can see where you're lining it up. You can see it through the clear block and you can see the white paper then. If you would have put this white on here and tried it was like a guessing game that you don't want to try to play <laughs> okay so you got that so that's it for the red hi julia happy stamping to you too and then this one is the blushing bride and that is the big heart and we're just going to put that in the corner right here so blushing bride is first strength and if you like to see it a little softer you can stamp it at second strength and you very much don't see it but it's it's just a very very light heart but we're gonna go with the second strength over there that's it you guys <laughs> a very cool valentine's day card hardly any stamping actually <laughs> all right so now it's a matter of assembly so we'll set that there so what we can do is now well let's just do this one thing at a time Mm, you guys know I like to do multiple gluings. <laughs> so we're going to do both of these things. So this white one on my right here is the inside. And this red one is a mat for on this white. So we're going to do this one first and adhere that. So you've got, mm, I don't know if it's quite an eighth of an inch. It's less than an eighth of an inch margin. 
whatever a half of three sixteenths is. <laughs> I don't know that math. And then this guy will go on our inside. And this one does have the eighth inch margin all the way around the edge. You guys, that was my tip Tuesday for yesterday. I think it confused more people than anything. <laughs> I talked to my dad about it afterwards. My dad is a math person and he, the ruler thing. And they, so Tyler is a math person with rulers as well because they work with wrenches and tools and stuff like that. And so they were talking about, yeah, five sixteenths minus one eighth is this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> but so when it comes to these, I like to do the two outside first. So let's just show you here. So this is about what you have. I'm going to put it down here so you can kind of see how much gap, I should say gap there is between each of these. They're cut so that you have slightly, like let's say an eighth of an inch margin. So when you line them up, you can visualize what it's going to look like. So if I cut your paper in all goodness, then it should look something like this. So I'm going to do the two middle ones last and I'm going to do the two outside ones first. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Wendy Kruger. So we're going to put a little bit of glue there and a little glue there. And you saw that I'm going to try to, and I think I want the hearts up that way. So top and bottom and the left should be about the same. And then on this side, top and bottom, and now the left should be about the same. And then that leaves a little bit of room for these two. So the reason I do the left and the right versus working left to right is because if you mess up, you can't make up for it at the end. So if you at least do the two outside ones, then you can compensate for it with this liquid glue. You've got a little wiggle room time. So like now that I have these here, I can kind of play with them until I get them exactly where I want them. You've got a little room where if, hi Tina, if you use tear and tape, not tear and tape, but like what, um, like a tape runner type thing, you wouldn't have that wiggle room. So I do left, right, and then the middles. Okay. On the back side of the right side, I'm going to put a little tear and tape and prep that for my ribbon. And I'm also going to put, so if you look at the card closely, what I did, um, or I should say what we did is we put the ribbon. So it's tucking around the back and then we slanted that left side. And so my ribbon had needs something to attach to. Do not, I repeat, do not use liquid glue. It will soak right through this and make a hot sticky mess. Not hot, a gooey mess. And so what I would definitely do, you could use a glue dot, but I like to use the tear and tape. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tear and tape right near the end here and set my ribbon down. And then I've got my tape prepped on the back side here. So I'm gonna flip the end over. Okay, and then I'm gonna secure this with a little more tear and tape, but I'm not going to rip that off. I'm just gonna cut that ribbon so it's a little less flappy there because I'm popping this back up. Now, for this side, I'm gonna wait to cut my ribbon until the end because I don't wanna get it to fray or get messed up. But um, this guy, oh, you guys, I'm getting to the end of my sheet of dimensionals. Life is good. We might be able to throw it away tonight. <laughs> oh, yes. You guys know it's the little things that excite me. So that one kind of rests on top of the red ribbon. And make sure you're straight. And I have the little hump on this side here kind of coming to the end. And then this little guy. Now, depending on what you stamp for your sentiment, you might cut it shorter. You might keep it longer. But I didn't center it as good as I wanted to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim off a hair on that side so it's more centered. And then that gets a little liquid glue. So just a little bit. And then my heart here, I'm gonna flip him over and put a teeny tiny little dot of glue there. Oh, I'm frozen. Thanks, Anne. Okay, let's see if we get it back. Okay, see if I get it back. Um, let's see, I, I get a little yellow uh, exclamation mark that tells me there, it might be back. Okay. Now, though, I have it on me. Let's <laughs> see, see when, what happens here. So, yep, Ellen, I see that I'm frozen. So we're going to see once what happens if I can get it back. I do see that my camera on the top is still frozen. So hang tight, you guys. We got it. 
We can figure it out. Oh, Deb, you mentioned me in a comment. I see it. <laughs> I'm trying to get the video back really quick, though. And and now I think I'm the video's back. Okay. Um, hang on. You guys hang tight. Where We got it. I'm seeing my hands moving. And hang tight, guys. It's coming back. So I got my hands back moving really fast. And I don't know what happened. But... I didn't keep making cart, <laughs> so hang tight. Yep, I think you guys are coming back. So I'm gonna keep her moving now. Okay, all right, I think you guys saw that I, I said hang tight because it should be working back. Hi, Zaina, good morning to you. Um, yeah. Um, I think we're good now. Okay, I'm gonna flip back down. I really didn't do anything else after I started freezing because you guys called it right away and I saw that too. And I honestly didn't even do anything. I let it ride it out. I have no idea what happened. So we're gonna flip. So I got a little strip of glue here. Um, no sound. Let's see, Janet. I got sound. I don't like to listen to myself, so I keep the sound off. <laughs> so, all right. So we're flip back down. So I've got my little happy Valentine's Day. We're just gonna adhere that right to here and put that so it's kind of centered. And um, you know what my mom did the other day when she was handing me like little bits like this? She picked them up with the glue and then I could pick it up really easily instead of trying to pick it off the table. Hi, Doris. Okay, so then this little guy goes on the side here. I kind of got it just helping to round off there. So it kind of ends that there. And there, you guys, sound works great. You guys are coming back. Okay, then on this side, what I did is I have a heart popped up, but because um, I actually did, I actually, I noticed mine was coming undone. So I'm gonna actually fix this as long as you guys are still kind of coming up to speed with me here. So I just, mm -hmm, I'm gluing it on the one, fly, one side flat and then the other side gets, the part that's hanging over is gonna get the dimensional. All right, now you guys, I see that I just got you going with me. So we're back on track. All right, so we got a little dimensional on that side. And then we're going to put a little dot of glue there. And that, oop, he's hanging over the edge. So that's going to help us round off that side of it. So it kind of like ends it. All right, now this whole back side here gets dimensionals. So let's put a bunch of those on. And that's my ribbon scissors. We are going to use this one. So when you get to the end of your dimensionals, make sure that you cut these sides down as big or as small as you want to <laughs> and use them. All right. So thanks for catching that, you guys. I honestly have no idea. I, I did not do a thing. I kind of put the camera back onto me and I tried to talk myself through it. I didn't even have to go out or come back in. I don't. I didn't do anything. And all of a sudden, it was back. So, couldn't tell you what happened. Hi, Amy. All right. But you guys sound like you're good now. I'm good now. Everybody's good now. Yay. <laughs> so, that got popped up. And that just gets put onto your card front. Now, I have on here a big margin of purple, which it really... It just accentuates the purple with the purple. So it's like, I believe that's about a good quarter inch. It's actually three eighths of an inch margin around the edges here. So not quite done. We're close, but we're going to grab some of the rhinestones and put them on. But we're going to Stella first. So one thing you can Stella on here are definitely your red hearts. And if Stella ever needs to be rejuvenated, you just... Um, or like more Stella added to the chamber, there's a push and a push button. Don't do it over your project, but squeeze ever so slightly. I generally go over my hand because then if I need to, I can go wash it off and just add a little Stella. You could even go all the way around your purple border if you wanted of your, your label. Um, but now I'm going to grab my pick tool and I feel like there should be one more diamond somewhere on that card. But we have here... A little guy that I put right in the middle of that one and then there's another one off to the side and I feel like there should be one more 
Let's see. Oh, we're going to put it right over there. Okay. And then now is when I would cut my tails of my ribbon, or I should say my one tail of my ribbon. Uh, the card's pretty much complete, and now I'm not going to risk um, fraying it. And so I just kind of grab it from the end here, and I cut it at a diagonal. And your tear and tape should end somewhere like there, or whatever double-sided tape you're using. And we got a nice purplicious card. So when you guys have the scraps <laughs> from designer paper, when you have these scraps, this is a good use of mixing and matching one inch scraps. So it's like one inches and then you can make them as high as you want them. So perfect. So there we go. We got one done. Woo hoo. All right. This was my math guys. When you're trying to figure out like, <laughs> honestly, this is what I did in my head. Well, I shouldn't say in my head, but I wrote it down for my notes for this when I was trying. And you see, I had it wrong and then I had to cross it off and figure it out. So that was actually my chicken scratch for this card. All right, so that goes in here. Simple, yes, you guys. Cards don't have to be all crazy all the time. So this is simple, but like elegant, nice, kind of looking where this, it's the designer paper that speaks for this. And you could make them all the same, like a continuous scene, and then cut that little split and then divide them. Very cool. So there you go, we got one done. All right, next, which one? Let's do this one next. And he has the red card base. Oh, Becky. Okay, so Becky's asking me this little container that I'm pulling my glue and stuff out of. So I know that some of you are on a waiting list for this because I ran out during my winter creative escape. This is a little caddy that I have a friend that her husband makes them on his 3D printer. And it says, be creative for, um, for non-team members, but team members say, be happy stampers. And it fits your glue. Uh, dimensionals are back here. The tear and tape fits here. I have enough for three scissors here, my glue ribbon and um, paper. It's my Stella, a pen, my tweezers, my take your pick tool, my bone folder and a ruler, my ink eraser and my adhesive eraser. It keeps it all contained right here. You guys see me, I constantly go right there to get it. Um, I sell them. Uh, so if you're on my team, the team price, you get a discount because I love my team. They get it for, tw I sell it for 20. And then if you're not on my team, they are 25. So regular normal price is the 25 and my sale price to my team is 20. And then um, and one says be creative and one says be happy stampers. So um, I do not have any more in stock at the moment. Um, they are being made. It takes two days to print one of them. They're made here locally about 40 minutes from me, not even 30 minutes maybe. And, um, and if you would like one, what I ask is you send me an email or you text me and tell me that you'd like one. And when I get more in stock, um, I will be able to ship them out. So it costs $7 to mail it and then um, it's 25 in case you're wondering. So yes, Holly, you are on the waiting list to get one, definitely. Okay, so you guys, what you have here, these are, so this is what you guys would get in your kit from me, plus the embellishments, um, but I keep mine for the class here um, all contained in the, the sheet over there until I'm ready to use them. But you get all these pieces for this card. Um, these two white pieces are actually the same. They are four by five and a quarter. And the one though is embossed with the painted textile embossing folder. Your piece of designer paper is three by four. This is my absolute pay favorite from this, uh, the whole designer series paper ensemble or like the sweet, the, the product. I just love this paper a lot. <laughs> I love it a lot. Three by four. And then the real red is a slightly bigger, like three sixteenths bigger on two sides. You should have a mother of pearl heart that comes from the die. So the dies, you guys have a whole bunch of little hearts, some medium sized hearts, the envelope, which we'll talk about in a bit. This is where the tag comes from as well. So the tag is cut from here and then embossed with the painted textile embossing folder. Ooh, yes, Jeannie Parker's got hers. Woohoo, filled up. So my girls that come to class, they carry them to and from and they keep it in their bag and then they pull it out at class and it just keeps everything contained. It's so awesome. This little label we talked about comes from the love, like bouquet of hope or bouquet of love, that one hybrid die set. You guys, four ribbons. <laughs> Look at this. You have some Highland Heather shimmer ribbon. You have some red mini ruffled ribbon. You have some Baker's Twine from the fan set, and then you have some of the um, organdy white ribbon. 
So these two carried over from the holiday catalog. So that was super exciting. All right, so fold your base in half and burnish your edges. Vertical card, so let's keep it vertical. Let's move these guys over here. Uh, stamping, we don't have a lot of stamping, so let's do that first. So our inside, what do I have here? Probably just a heart. Oh, I got three hearts and a happy Valentine's Day. So let's do that first. Let's get out the mat. Now, this is, ooh, I might have to go get it. It's from Banner Year, the XOXO. We're gonna need our red ink again. So let's open this up. Happy Valentine's Day. Just stamp that near the top. Again, hi, Latokia. I generally stamp closer to the top, so I have a lot of room to write. If you don't like to write, <laughs> you can stamp it lower. I give you permission to stamp it wherever you want to. <laughs> Make it how you want it. These little three hearts come from this set. And we're going to use the real red ink again. Stamp them near the bottom. That's it for the inside. Now, I have to admit, <laughs> I started to clean up after class <laughs> on Monday night. <laughs> and I got clean up happy. And I completely put the banner year away <laughs> without remembering that I needed it for tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're going to have to excuse me for 10 little seconds while I go grab that set. <laughs> so hang tight. This is a set from the annual catalog and it's your versatile set <laughs> for the holidays. So you've got your Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, and Valentine's Day. And that little XOXO comes right from there. And if you see here, I've only used a few stamps out of here. This is a set that I got. It must have carried over from a different um, catalog. And <laughs> you guys are going to think, gosh, she's really mean to me. She gave me such a teeny little thing to stamp a sentiment on. So I will tell you, if you don't want to stamp it and you don't want to use it, you don't have to. But if you do want the XOXO, have faith in yourself. Well, you might not even have the XOXO. If you have something else that's super tiny, or you could write yourself a little note on here. It doesn't have to be stamped. You could write a love you or hugs to you with a little red pen. You could hand write your little note on there. You don't have to stamp it. But I promise you, this fits in here. Oh, take a deep breath and ink up good. Hi, Susan Pacheco. Yes, you can definitely catch the replay. It's always there. So I'm pretending that's where it needs to go. And <laughs> let's hope. And it did. It worked. See it? It fits right in there. There's not a lot of wiggle room, but it works. Okay? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle with it. So that's it for stamping, you guys. Kept it very limited. So let's get glue happy. Let's see what we can glue. So this can get glued. This can get glued. And our inside can get glued. So let's get those three things all prepped with our glue. If you're new to me and watching me with my liquid glue, I generally do a thin line around the edge. I don't get too close to the edge because I don't want the glue oozing out on me. I like the liquid glue because it allows me to set it down and wiggle it around until I get it where I want it, like that and then doesn't dry right away, so you've got a little time to work with it. Hi, Shauna Burns. Hi, Jean Terwilliger. And then our inside is right here. Um, if I know some people struggle with the liquid glue. If you aren't comfortable with it and you use too much, it might ooze out and it gets your fingers all sticky, but as long as you keep it off your fingers and off your workstation, you're probably gonna be okay. Isn't there some sort of eraser that takes that off? Um, off ink. Yes, yeah, Stacy, it's this one right here. It's called a mono adhesive sand eraser. Um, you can get them on Amazon in like a pack of five, um, or you can get them singly, I think. Um, if you have a shipment going out, you guys, I do keep these in stock. I get them off of Amazon. I do sell them for three bucks, and I have them in my adhesive basket. So if anybody's ever getting kits from me, and you guys need adhesive, or if you need one of these things, 
Um, they're from Amazon. I, I also have some extra reverse tweezers in my basket now. Um, I just basically charge for whatever the price is on Amazon. I round up a, to the nearest dollar so I don't deal with change. Basically, that's how that works. So I'm putting some tear and tape. So if you're getting card kits from me and you need to add something, uh, or even adhesive, um, I can always add it to your card kit. It really won't change the shipping very much. Um, Ellen said that she has not, she has done none of the above with the glue. <laughs> so Ellen, you should tell everybody what you've been doing lately. Ellen came up for the winter creative escape and I showed her how to use something. <clears throat> this little handy gadget and tell, I, I'm going to wait for Ellen to tell everybody what she did <laughs> uh, all over. You get glue all over everything. So I've heard that from a lot of people, Ellen, that they get glue all over everything, but that comes down to working with it and learning how to use it and being patient with it and not giving up on it. I'm curious, uh, show of hands, how many people have converted from them from like a tape runner to liquid glue? Oh, Stacy, you added it to your cart, good girl. Yep, then you got it. So people who have Amazon accounts, you might as well just get it yourself, that works perfectly. But sometimes people don't have that and I like to help out where I can. So I'm just gonna pop this guy up with dimensionals as well. Eee! There you go, Ellen. She makes bows all day long. <laughs> Before she came to the Winter Creative Escape, she didn't make bows. And you guys see me make bows with my bow maker. And I have my friend from Johnsburg makes them. Um, I used to babysit for his kids. And he started making them for me. I got them from a different source prior. Um, but uh, Ellen never knew how to use it. And so we taught her how to use it. And now she's a bow maniac. <laughs> she's got bows everywhere, she said. <laughs> yes, Cindy, it takes a little time to convert. I'll be honest with you. Um, you will be happy though. Yes, I do pull out, I, you guys know I love tear and tape a lot. I use that like double-sided tape. Um, I just haven't, I have such a hard time with this tape runner that every time I use it, it gets off track and then it gets all gooped up and gunky on the inside, regardless of whatever mono adhesive it is, like a thing. Um, yes, a bottle of glue, Robin, I will 110% agree with you. It does so many cards, tons of cards compared to tape runner. Tape runner runs out so fast. Um, so I'm going to take my pokey tool here. Um, yes, Holly, I love it for the wiggle room. Definitely agree. I'm going to poke my ends of my ribbon through and go both the white and the red. you got to be careful because that hole is only so big. And you know, like pushing a lot of stuff through a little hole, it could like <laughs> not be good for the hole. So, <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, so be very careful with that. Then you guys, this will come up. And if you want to see more of the white ribbon, you know, twist that around to the front. And this is where, I'll be honest with you, I did this um, one-handed a time or two, but... I have my reverse tweezers in the house. And so now I can just set that here and it'll hold it. Boom, I love it. You're gonna take a little bit of that twine and make yourself a knot. Hi, Angie Liner. Um, I agree, Stacy. It would be so nice if I Stampin' Up! sold the refills of the glue. All right, so I'm just gonna make a really tight knot here and then I'm gonna do one more knot. So that, it, well, it's going to make a knot, I should say. And tie that tight. Thank goodness for my tweezers. So Jennifer Merle Hampshire is the one that got me on that. It took me a long time to buy this, but I got it. And now I've used it a few times. So that's pretty much our tag for here. The little pearl bow. You guys, this is the mother of pearl. <laughs> it's so shimmery and awesome and glossy and iridescent-y and amazing. And it is die cut out for you. And all you have to do is put some dimensionals on the back and that goes on our tag. And we officially finished a sheet of dimensionals. Yay. And we're gonna grab, you know what? I have white ones in my drawer here. Whoa. Okay, there they are. So I've got this guy. Actually, it's gonna be better for small ones. Hi, Lisa. So this little purple heart is half on, half off. So I'm only gonna put a little dimensional on the left side back, and then I am gonna put liquid glue on the part that hits the white pearl paper. And that's gonna come something like that. I didn't put this down yet. And we can flip that over and put some dimensionals on the back of our tag. 
and we're going to get that down on our card front. And you guys will be amazed. I did put it a little crooked. I generally like things straight up and down or left and right, but this one was okay doing it a little crooked. Um, you have to be, oh, you, the was reverse tweezers. They have legs. I had a pair and a year ago they walked away. Yes. Anything can walk away, <laughs> depending on where you lose it. <laughs> so, all right. This little tag now. I did take a little tinsy little bit here of my side of my dimensionals. And that's going to go on one side of that. Oh, and it's got to go over a little bit further. Oh, man. Now I broke it in half. I'm trying to not get it to go over the edge. Okay, it's got to be skinny. I can't see. There. Let's get that off of there. So it's got to be skinny enough that it's not hanging over. And then I'm going to put a little dot of liquid glue on the left side. And now that kind of hangs over our tag. I got it kind of tucked behind that little white heart and kind of going horizontal with the purple ribbon. And, okay, we can cut our ribbon. So these little tags or the little ties can just get made short. And then however you envision your ribbon at the top. So the top one, I might do a little bit shorter. They're always at an angle. This back one, he'll be a little bit longer. And now I'm gonna flip one going the other way. And we'll get this guy back here going that way too. And you can, it's like giving him a haircut, you guys. <laughs> oh yeah. So there's that. And last but certainly not least, we have some real red rhinestones. Red, red, red. So I think I gave you guys three in your kits, if I'm not mistaken. I definitely put one on the ribbon. And then there was two up yonder over here. And grab your Stella pen. This purple heart definitely is begging to be stella -ed. So get a little bit of shimmery glitter on that heart right there. And I think that we've got our second one done. Simple, you guys. Okay, what I love about this one is the designer paper is three by four. So you can get 12 three by fours out of a, a 12 by 12 sheet of paper because three by four. So it's three columns by four rows gives you 12 of those and just a little tag on the side. So, and a little bit of a sentiment there and we got it done, Woohoo! All right, and it really gives you the opportunity or the ability to showcase your designer series paper. All right, we have two done. So, where am I putting them? Over here, <laughs> okay. It's like, you guys, by the end, I'm like a, a disaster, or like a plethora of stuff all over here. So we're going to set those there. And, oh man, I think we're going to save the tic-tac-toe card for last, just because it is so stinking cute. So we're going to grab our 1970s kitchen. <laughs> you guys are going to have to agree with me, I think. Oh, I just, so was awesome. So, so Chris and I were stamping together, and we had tried a card, and it just was not working. It, like, was failing us like miserably and I went downstairs to go get something or get a snack for us or do something and I came back and Crystal like had these colors pulled out and this kind of layout and then I was like oh my gosh like it's so cool I love it so this is how it ended up and we wanted to use this black and white gingham ribbon and we hadn't used that stripe stamp yet so we needed to pull that in so let's grab that and what do we have happy valentine's day and the little xo so let me get this cleaned up real quick guys it's always good to get your stuff cleaned up and put away so you don't lose it or it doesn't get legs right and okay we need though this little stripey thing so that's in this set right we were like, I'll be honest, we got, we, we were stumped. We didn't know what to do with these two circle things. They just kind of like blew our mind. We're like, what are they supposed to be? So we didn't use them, but we definitely pulled the stripe in here, you guys. So have that ready. And we're going to have to clean this because it had a little bit of red ink on it. And we're going to be using black. So. 
I think we're ready to get the party started. So this was your scalloped contour dies in Flirty Flamingo. So you have that die cut. You have a Bermuda Bay envelope. So you guys, let's, this is cool. So they did have an envelope. Yes, Sharon. Carissa, ugh, I love, it. so she stamps like I do. <laughs> so it makes it very easy to, to make cards with her because we both kind of think the same way and we both have the next thought together. So it works out really good. So to do this little envelope, all you guys I'm going to do is put a little glue dot on one side and put another glue dot on the other side and another glue dot on the bottom and bring it up. That's how I did mine. Okay. So Susan Reed, if you're not getting notifications when I go live, check your settings. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on, but I will take a second, you guys, because you're not the first person that has told me that, but I'm going to show you guys really quick. Maybe this might help. When you're in a page, so I'm going to go view as a page visitor, and you go to these three little buttons over here. Uh, this is what your people, hang on. Da, 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 da. I'm going to go to a different page. That isn't my page because, because, because of all the wonderful things he does. Because it's me, I'm going to go to Annie's Fountain. So I'm going to show you guys because some of you are having a hard time getting notifications. So this is Annie's Fountain City Cafe, and I like her page. There are these three little dots right here. When you click on those three little dots, you can manage follow settings. And when you go there, that's where it gives you the ability to see the live videos. So... Um, you can see all, you can see highlights, and then um, when you click on all, you can click all um, videos. You want all notifications. So these are where you set your settings. Um, posts, standard, you could have standards or highlight. I put standards because I want to see everything. I want to see when she goes live. Now, you know, so this is where you go to change your stuff, okay? So it's those three little dots that are by like the information at the top. Okay, so that is where you might need to go, Susan, if you um, want to just double check that. Um, there is a little white heart. And so in your kit, you guys have three hearts, these little teeny tiny mother of pearl hearts. I'm going to put them so I don't lose them. One there, one there, and a heart here. Um, I think it's the same on your computer. Look for those three little dots. Wherever the business's name is, um, go to where my screen just showed where it was right next to it. So I'm going to put that little heart right here. And hi, Bar Barco. This guy right here, I'm going to pop up with a dimensional on both of its the heart humps. <laughs> and I'm not going to worry about the bottom because the bottom gets like tucked right into here. So that is what we've got going on for our little bit over here. <clears throat> set that right next to those two hearts you in your kit will also have that black and white gingham ribbon uh, you have this little guy and of course um i punched yours out it's the pick a banner punch and i'm going to steal one from that kit over there and then repunch this because my goal when i design is to bring the punch down and show you the punch in action and i always forget <laughs> you guys have experienced that with me before the designer paper is three by three and you can choose if you want they kind of have a pattern to them they go left, right, or you could put them going up, down. And so that's going to go on this white piece, which before we do that, we want to do our little stamping. Your Bermuda Bay is embossed with the gingham embossing folder. And then you have two pieces of white, same size, four by five and a quarter. And then you also have a flirty flamingo here. And that is your traditional eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And take your bone folder, burnish the edge, and remember, it's a horizontal card. <laughs> so we're going to stamp our inside horizontal. So I mentioned that I'm going to steal it from this card, and I will promise to punch the other one. So we're going to grab Bermuda Bay. So this is an example of what you guys get in your kit. And I already have it punched on one end, and I, I left it a little long in case. So we are going to put this going this way <laughs> and put that on top of it so I don't forget. <clears throat> All right, so I have the one side already banner punched for you guys so that it's it's done. And then you'll stamp your sentiment closer to the left, and then you can cut off what you want on the right. Okay, let's stamp, though. So we need that little tag. We need a white piece and then this piece. And what do we have? Just a heart. Yep, just a heart. 
So grab your piercing mat because we'll need that because they're photopolymer. <clears throat> so this one got stamped in black ink, so memento, because it kind of helped match the gingham ribbon. So because the memento is a little more fabric, I push harder on that one. And that's just going to get stamped closer to the left. Give that ink a second to hit the paper, especially with the memento pad. All right, so that's stamped. And I believe that's it for black ink. Now, if you guys have different sentiments at home, definitely put sentiments on the inside if that's what you want. The one that really does match in this one, it says, happy to have you in my life. But I'm choosing to leave it blank so that whoever wins these cards could potentially stamp something else if they want to. All right, so the happy Valentine's Day is done. And then we have this big heart. If I only had a heart. And that will be in the flirty flamingo this time instead of blushing bride. Flirty is just a little bit darker than the blushing bride. So ink that up. We're going to do it at first strength, bottom right corner. And then our stripies. Stripies. They're very not noticeable. <laughs> They're back there. And that's second strength. And so second strength is chosen because if you go at first strength, it's super dark. Now, if you like that, you could definitely do that. But what you're gonna do, uh, hmm. so it's hard to see the white on white, but I'm just gonna start at second strength. I'm gonna stamp off. So then I'm gonna go one, stamp off, two, stamp off, three, and now we've got a little bit left, and it's okay, we might end up like just off a little bit. Oh, but we ended up good. Look at that. <laughs> so I have the same distance on the top as I do on the bottom and just started to capture that last one, but then it was off. So I'll do that. So that was the stripies in Flirty Flamingo. And that should be it for stamping for now. So we'll set this off to the side and we'll get glue happy. So we can put some adhesive on the backs of these three things. So... Yes, Vicki, I definitely agree. They are quick, simple, pretty, easy to mass produce. I definitely agree. Definitely agree. This one might have a little bit more because of the little hearts that need to get die cut, but we all love quick, simple, and easy to mass produce. So this goes on our inside. And then this white goes on to our scalloped contour dies. How does one win your cards? Oh, that's a good question, Tina. So what I do is when I, <laughs> like maybe within like a week or so after class, when I'm getting ready to do my next live class, I go back through the comments and I scroll through them and I stop. <laughs> and whosoever name I stop on is who gets a card. <laughs> and if it's a four card class, I pick four names. If it's a three card class, I um, pick three cards. And so it's by commenting. Um, if you comment, that's how I, when I scroll through my comments, uh, that's, I, and I randomly stop, I like, I scroll and boom, and I pick it, and that's how it goes. <laughs> uh, it, there's not a lot of rocket science to it, but if you comment, um, then the more that you comment, the, the odds of you having your name get pulled up is, it's good, it's, you know, better than not commenting at all, so yes, that's how I, and I, I take different snippets of the video. Oh, I just did that wrong, you guys. Hang on. Who wasn't watching me? It's okay, look, because I just glued it. Um, I'm okay. <laughs> so you see what I did? I pulled that up. <laughs> see, it happens to me too, you guys. I get distracted. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm put the tear and tape back here. Yes, stop here, stop here, Linda Hall. You're funny. Yep, that's exactly it. So um, how it works is, um, yeah, that's how it works. It's like, because otherwise it would be too hard. I can't log everybody's names every time. Like Kelly does that for Mystery Night. She'll log everybody's names that submit the card because she can look at who posted. But for doing the drawings for this, it's like just scroll through and I go to the beginning of the video, I go to the middle of the video, and I go to the end of the video. And I just, just random selections there. <laughs> All right. See, we did okay. We got that back on there. And I'm not going to try to sneak more tear and tape in there. I'm just going to hope that it's all good to go. All right. So <laughs> you see how I almost messed up there. So I am going to cover that back up, though, because I do not want that 
that tape exposed here, I actually want to put dimensionals on the back of this. And if I would have left that, it would have wanted to catch the paper there. So I'm gonna go back and put, yeah, you better start chatting. Yeah, that's how it works. Like, um, sometimes too, what I'll do is I'll look at who shared the video and I'll go through the list and like kind of like shut my eyes and put my finger down and see who, who gets picked that way. You know, I try to just keep things as much as random as possible. And um, it's good. I, I mean, I've given away probably, okay, so I've been doing lives now for almost two years. It'll be two years in March. And I started giving stuff away way back in the beginning. And I think I've logged over a thousand cards I've mailed out. Or, Well, I have a little stack here that if people don't give me their address. I, I don't know where to mail it to. And or I'm getting confused, you guys. I'm going to look at this. I'm <laughs> talking and getting distracted. So I'm going to put this one down first. And so... As long as I get your address to mail the card, I get it. And I know when Carmen Melinda's had a, an issue, it didn't get there. Her chicken card didn't get there. And I sent her another one. I didn't know it didn't get there. But all I know is I can pop them in the mail and hope that they get to you. So, uh, so that gets glued. And then I'm going to glue this one down. Thanks, Diane. I love making and designing cards to share with you guys. So it makes me feel good that you like the cards to know that you like them awesome this gets put on here and then now this one's ready to go on here and boom the color combination isn't it awesome laura flirty flamingo and bermuda bay oh yeah all right so this guy needs to get trimmed a little bit on the one side i knew that he was going to be slightly too long so just cut it somewhere it's going to get covered up by the um the end of the envelope but i like to pop my banners up with an embell uh, embellishment, um, a dimensional on the one side and then the other side gets glue. And then we're gonna get a little bit of liquid glue on the back of that. This thing is gonna go some, I've got it kind of in between the two humps. So it's something like that. And then this guy is off to the side like that. And I have it so that you can still see a little of that black ribbon should, like peeking out. And then I've got my little white hearts that you can't see. I knew they were there though. And the mother of pearl is so cool. It just accents. What was that embossed with? Um, Barbara, it was the gingham embossing folder, which is actually part of this suite of products. Um, thanks, Carla. Um, you guys are loving these color combination. I love it. So um, I made a snail card. I think it was last year and I used these colors. Um, <laughs> Carissa had to fight for these colors. Why, you're funny. Yes, I always want to use purple. And so Carissa was like, yes, we can make a purple card. <laughs> so she doesn't talk like that. That was just oh, me, me, <laughs> me making fun of her. But yes, I had, Carissa fought for this. The Flirty and the Bermuda Bay together. And yes, Barbara, this is the gingham embossing folder that is part of that suite. So um, Stella, we can't forget about Stella. Oh man, I'm freezing again though. So let's give it a second while um, my this little exclamation mark thing comes up and I don't know, it gives me like a little warning thing and it wants to freeze on me and I don't want it to freeze. So hang on, it froze for me and well, I'll tell you guys here that it's freezing um, so that you see that uh, and you're not alone, I am freezing too. <laughs> yep, I lost the picture too. So it should come back here in a second. And what we'll do is try to help it along the way. So we'll take that off and we'll try to reconnect to the camera up here. You know, the last time we were A-OK -okay, and the last time we weren't. So let's see here. Yep, just give it a second. We should come back. We should come back and hopefully move on with the next card because we were all done with card number three. Okay, but let's see here. I think it's still kind of, still kind of stuck. So I think what I'll do is pull, oh, there it is. I put my arms up in the air. <laughs> I put my arms up and it worked. Okay, we might be back. So give it a second, you guys, we might be back. So, okay, we were talking about Stella though. 
It's like, what would you Stella on this card? Because this is already glittery, this is already shimmery, and then it's like, what's left? So, you guys, honestly, what I might do is the whole outside of your um, scallop contour here. And you could do the whole frame. You could do the whole frame. And just go all the way around. It's going to put a little bit of glitter on it, just like that. So Stella doesn't get a break on this card. Generally, we never give Stella a break. Stella is this, wink of Stella. So we generally never give her a break on a card unless we forget, and then it's our fault. But there you go, guys. You're loving the Flirty Flamingo and the Bermuda Bay with the gingham black and white ribbon. It's so cool. So happy Valentine's Day to you. So there you go, guys. We have three done. Okay. I think you guys are catching up with me. I did my little arms up in the air and waved them around like I just didn't care. And it seemed to work. So, all right. We've got three done. And we're going to mosey on to number four here. And I think it's my favorite. Even though it's not purple, it's still amazing. All right. So this one is, Krista, this was like, a brainchild of, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was both of ours. And one said something, something said, somebody said something else, and then all of a sudden, Chris is like, tic-tac-toe. And then we ended up with this card. So it was really hard, I think, it was really kind of hard to design with this card, this stamp set, because you had lots of little, little pieces. You have lots of little stamps. And I was like, what do you do with all this little stuff? And I think it was Chris that said, let's make a tic-tac-toe board. And then I kept calling it a bingo board. So we'll keep that out. So we ended up with this tic-tac-toe board. So cool. Love it. So time-worn type embossing folder in the back. And um, stitch rectangles were kind of added for this one. And let's see here. So you guys, in your kit, you'll have four of these little strips of Bermuda Bay that are one-eighth inch by two and three quarters. So you have four of those. You have a little white heart and your stitched rectangle. You'll have, this is part of the designer paper. So it's the heart somewhat. So if you really want the hearts, you could do the hearts, but that kind of sets it off. You have 12 inches of flirty flamingo ribbon, you guys, and I'm gonna show you it's enough. <laughs> now looking back, I wish I would've had my mom cut another inch to two inches to give you because you're gonna say I'm mean to you that you only, I only gave you 12 inches. So be patient and I'll show you how to make it work. You have these two mats are the same size, four by five and a quarter. One's flirty flamingo, one's white. And then we have Bermuda Bay for our base. So let's fold that in half and burnish our edges. And that's set. All right, let's, let's, let's put our ribbon down. I wanted to get stamping, but I also <laughs> was anxious to use the ribbon a little bit. So this is some flirty flamingo ribbon that came from the annual catalog. And actually, I'm just guessing, that needs to go there. But the designer paper here, let's put a little bit of liquid glue on that. And that gets adhered onto the left-hand side over here. Now, depending on how your paper got cut, you might think, oh, I want pink on the top. I might have blue on the top. It's really whatever you want it to be. So that one actually matches that. Um, there is a front and a back to this. And there are actual words on here. So actually, it's supposed to be like that. It's very hard to read them. And, and that's what I'm going to go with right here. <laughs> so, all right. Hi, Carol Sanquintini, San Quinetti. <laughs> I almost had that one wrong. Okay. So now I think, oh, yeah, it's still in the good spot. All right. So you guys, I gave you 12 inches. I envisioned you needing six inches or like not even six inches for here, which would leave this much. And then you're going to use this much for over here. And then it leaves you with this much. <laughs> I wish I would have left you with this much. But this is, you have to be very, 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 very conservative with the ribbon. Okay? As conservative as you can be. So very, very little flipping over here. So I am I generally try to have a little bit more. But you guys, I only, I don't know why I figured 12 inches. Wasn't quite enough, but it's going to work. So you're only going to flip over just a little bit and get by without using a lot. Okay, so I barely have any on my tails here. It's good. You still have all this left and it's still gonna work. But So there's that. 
I am going to, because those ends are so short, I'm gonna put the tear and tape over the top just to make sure. And then we're gonna add a little bit more liquid glue to the back of this so that we have some adhesive to adhere it to our card base. And flip that over. So the Flirty Flamingo ribbon was a nice addition to this whole set of cards. I had never used it before this set of cards. I own it, <laughs> never had used it. So that's our base, okay? So nothing crazy about that. So now we'll do our stamping, okay? So the Happy Valentine's Day is stamped in red. So we're gonna get that first. And is that clean? Yep, that's clean. Okay, so grab your real red. Now, if you wanted to use Flirty or Bermuda, you could definitely do that. Um, it works, either one, but we thought the red kind of pulled in the red from the stripe and the red from the heart. And so that gets stamped near the bottom here, like that, perfect. And the inside has, let's see what I did here. Oh, an X and an O, perfect. So um, the other thing is you have a little heart here and there's one stamp that says, hug me. I don't know if I clean this, so. It was really hard with the little words in here. So if you look at the set, there's two that are the same size that say hug me and BFF. And then the other one says love you. These say you're cute and text me. The one that I love the most is hug me. So that's the one I pick over and over and over again. So we'll get our stripes off of here and put the hug me on. So you guys are going to be very careful. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you you might not have the stamp set even. So I did give you a white cutout heart. And what you're going to have to do is hover over the top. It's photopolymer, so it should work pretty good as long as you take time and give it a second so you can stamp the hug me. And um, we're going to fill that in with the flirty flamingo, like solid heart that's right here. And I think we don't want red, so let's get the red out of here. Otherwise, we're gonna ink that up in red. So we've got our flirty flamingo, and I believe it's at first strength. So, yes, or second strength. Ah, second strength, let's do second strength. So you stamp off, and then you're gonna hover over the top, kind of eyeball it. And then when you get it where you want it, you fill that in, okay? And then our inside, I've got a little X's and O's. There's a song, X's and O's. So there's the little heart that's here. And let's grab this. And we need a little X out of here. And he's in Bermuda Bay. <laughs> or she, whatever it is. And I don't even think we used purple ink tonight. Sad face. So the little X can go down here. All right, so that's what I've got on the inside. I'm gonna leave a sentiment off for whoever gets this. They can figure out what they wanna do. Um, so now, this happened in class. People ask, well, what should you do? And I'm like, well, the, what I did, what Krista did, we actually glued our little strips down because once you glue the strips down, then you know where to stamp, okay? And I do need to apologize because they are one eighth inch wide. They are not <laughs> that wide. <laughs> And so you don't need a lot of glue. So don't squeeze really hard while you're doing this, but I'm just gonna lightly brush over them. You can see I hardly have any glue on there. So, okay, I don't know if that's blurry to you. Maybe I need to go over there. But so <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a guessing game, but what I can do is set this here and I'm gonna think, well, uh, one's gonna go right about there. And then I'm gonna put a little adhesive. It doesn't matter if you do the bottom ones going this way or the top ones going this way, but kind of leave enough room to stamp your hearts or your X's or whatever it is that you want to stamp inside. So there's another one, and I'm gonna put that right there. Let's just make sure. Hi, Gwen. Okay, and that one's gonna go there. You guys, I just kind of eyeballed thinking about, well, how big are my hearts? How big are my X's? 
and just putting a teeny tiny amount of glue on the back. So there. So we got our tic-tac-toe board kind of in place. And the middle one, that guy gets popped up in the middle. And then you got to stamp your X's and your other hearts. So hearts win. <laughs> That's what was in our head. So we wanted to stamp. <laughs> it was some, it was strategic how we stamped these. So now that you've got the that down, so this heart will go here. This heart goes here. And I notice I have a little more room than over there. It's okay. Um, it's all going to turn out just fine. And then Bermuda Bay. Now we can fill in our X's. So we're going to put one little guy there. One guy there. And one there. Okay. Yay. And then this little heart will get popped up in the middle. All right. Like that. Okay. <laughs> Pressure's on. We got to get this ribbon to work. Okay. So tear and tape. I always have a hard time finding the end. So a little tear and tape right in this middle section here. Same thing has got to happen, you guys. You got to be so conservative. So I know this works because Diane did it in class the other night. So teeny little bit. Just a little bit hanging over the edge. Just enough so it can catch your tape. And I'm going to actually put that right over the top of that right away. Okay. And just a little bit. And it's going to leave you with a schnibble. A little, little schnibble. <laughs> Math didn't work when I wrote down the instructions on this one. I promise. I did write down, and I don't know why I wrote 12 inches. I figured 4 inches times 3. And that does not make... <gasps> oh, duh. You guys, now I get it. I don't have ribbon back here. Oh, my gosh. Okay, look at what I did, you guys. Now I know why. So for those that are watching the video with me and haven't done your cards, look what I did. I ended the ribbon. I put two inches here. I just, look, when I looked at this, it says four inches times three sections. Here's one inch and then one inch. There's no ribbon in the middle. And then the bottom starts here and goes. So there's no ribbon in the middle area here. Oh my gosh. Okay, light bulb moment right now, okay? So, if you haven't done your cards, you're not going to end up with that little schnibble, okay? But <laughs> it can work, though. We made it work the other night. So, now that little guy <laughs> goes on here. And if you don't have the best fingers, ask somebody to help you. But you can get it just so slightly and tie a little knot. And it works. <laughs> it really does work. Diane Bogenhagen, are you watching? Oh, she struggled the other night just a little bit, but she made it work. And so, you know what? If you're very conservative, it works. But we really didn't intend for there to be any ribbon back here. It's, you guys, it's called ribbon conservation at its finest right there. Ha! <sighs> Gosh darn it. So now you guys know I try to always save as much ribbon as possible. And that's why you have 12 inches. Okay. Carissa! Did you remember that we did that, you guys? And I thought of it while we were live here. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Okay. It worked. It all works out. So we need dimensionals, though, on the back of this guy. So let's get this all queued up here for us. Who likes that ribbon-saving hack right there, you guys? Uh, I didn't even remember I did it until right now. That's just paid to send me to school, right? <laughs> All right, so let's take these guys off. We'll put these on our card front. Oh, Diane Bogenhagen, I cannot wait to tell you this. Nancy Stormer, too. She she, she didn't struggle, though, because she got two ends of the ribbon, and my mom just threw an extra in her kit. So, oh, man. All right, so that goes right here. I got it centered top to bottom, and a little closer to the right than the left, so I can see more of the designer series paper. And this one gets the best bling in the book. It is the iridescent rhinestones. They're like cotton candy gems to me, you guys. They're so cool. So I think that you have a big one. The big ones are so big. I'm going to just grab my finger with that. 
And then I got a medium one and a small one, I think, in your kits. So right there and there. So you should have three in your kit and Stella. So what do you Stella on here? I know that if I sell the hearts, so right now they have um, some graininess to them. They are not like completely solid. If you go over that with Stella, it'll make them bleed. So you know what you can do? You could Stella your tic-tac-toe board with a little Stella action. Get a little glitter going on. Boom, just like that. Okay, so... Little Stella action. Huh, that little baby bow. He's worth a lot of work. No, he, he was a lot of work. <laughs> Not worth anything. <laughs> but he looks nice, though. Okay, so we got this one done. I think that's this card. My sample. I'm going to put this guy back in here. And I think that I like the tic-tac-toe one the best because it's different. <laughs> We Googled the, this this um, bundle to see if any, we saw a tic-tac-toe board at all, and we didn't see one. So, all right, so you guys, we have our flirty and Bermuda cards. If you notice, these were flirty and Bermuda, and these were pinks, purples, and reds. More purple and red, but, um, so these two kind of complemented each other, and then these two complement each other. And so that's what we ended up with for this class. So fun, versatile, easy cards. I think that, like somebody had mentioned earlier, they're duplicatable, easy, like these two especially. So when we do a class like this or we try to put cards together, we try to keep them like not all easy, not all hard, but a good mixture. So this is where I always come down to the final question, you guys. <laughs> Which one is your favorite? Uh, so oh, I know that I got a bunch of you guys loving this that commented on the Bermuda Bay and the Flirty Flamingo. Um, they're just, like, they're all so fun. They're all different, yet um, just great Valentine's Day. I think anybody would be happy to get one of these in the mail, I would think, right? <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Yeah, I see the hearts coming through. Woohoo! Okay, so that's what we got for the Sweet Talk card class. If anybody is interested, I do have five sets of the card kits that would be, like, the four kitted cards like this. Um, and they have all the materials in, except for the stamps, the ink, and the adhesive. You would need that yourself to put the cards together. Um, so if you're wondering um, what the next bundle suite class is for the next month, um, the next month is going to feature Heart and Home, or yeah, Heart and Home. So all the stamps, it was a super sweet. So you have two stamp sets, and so that's where all these got pulled from. Uh, so you would potentially need to have some flowers. Um, that's a flower stamp and a sentiment. This one's a sentiment. This one is the big flower and then a sentiment. And this one is a flower and a sentiment. So if you don't necessarily have these two bundles, they are easily interchangeable with other flowers you may have, or you could get creative and do something different. But like this background right here is actually designer paper. So you don't have to worry about stamping anything in the designer papers back here. And so this is the class that's going to be the featured sweet bundle class for next month. It's in about a month. Um, and you are, there's, I'm planning for 48. So I'm making up 48 kits for this. Um, I'm, I think I'm halfway full at this point, but the class is far away yet. So um, get signed up for that if you're interested. And then just so you guys remember, next week, Thursday, is the ink, paper, scissors featuring the plentiful plants or the bloomer you're planted. And I still have some kits available for this one as well if you're interested. So everything else, though, for February, you know, go ahead and watch that showcase that I did um, featuring all the February cards, and you can get a feel for everything that's coming up in the near future. And we're going to do a couple drawings really quick. Um, I do have my numbers here. Uh, so we're going to do the celebration board number three. So this is number three. I'm going to make sure we're all good here with my numbers. I got five. I had 26 of them last time because I remembered from the last celebration, we had a, one more person that placed an order to get to number 26 on the board. So we're just going to flip this down five and perfect. Okay. So 
Um, there might have been 27. So I might have a 27. So what are the odds, you guys, that I picked number 27? So there's a... <laughs> There's one extra number in here. It's probably number 27. So to get on my celebration board, which is back here, for every $50 you purchase with me, your name goes on the board. So if you place a $100 order, you get two names on the board. If you do a $150 order, you get three and so on. Um, and so it's not like cumulative. So if you place a $56 order, you get your name on once. I don't bank the $6. It's like a per order basis. And um, I'm on my third board and we're going to start the fourth board and I have the names documented already for who's going to go on the next board. So, and don't worry if you place an online order and you're not an in-person uh, customer to me, I do write your name on the board for you after I see your order come through. So no worries there. And so we're going to do that drawing. And then we're also going to do the drawing for those who place an order to get the class for free. Because when you get it, um, when you place an order and use the host code to get the class for free, it helps me get extra host items. And so I will look here really quick so I can tell you guys who, um, who that is. So Angela Knutson and also Tammy Steckling bought the bundle to get the RSVP for class for free. So they got the free paper. Tammy, you didn't reply to me an email though. Um, I forgot to put your paper in your package, which you told me, but then you didn't tell me if, um, if I needed to mail it now or if you could get it with your next package. So, so I don't know. We got to, we got to connect real quick. So, um, I got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, Oh my goodness. 12 people that place orders to get the class for free. Um, so we'll do that random number drawing in a second and I'm going to flip down right now. And we're gonna do a drawing here for to see who the winner of the celebration board is. All right, you guys, it's this one right here. Number three, okay, number three, Lynn Beasley. You are the lucky winner. I'm gonna bring it close so you can see your name here. I think you can see it. Lynn Beasley, you're on there, woohoo. So, how it works, when you are not local to me and you win on the celebration board, this just happened to Ann Bellinger. Uh, so she won celebration board number one. So Lynn, you will get a $25 gift certificate for me. So when you place your next order, uh, um, basically what I'll have to do is send you a check in the mail <laughs> for $25. So Ann's check just went out in the mail, I think yesterday or today with her um, the kits that she just got. So once the order is placed is when you can claim your drawing your gift certificate and then there's only the only way I can really give, pay you for it is to get cut you a check so because it's a $25 gift certificate that you want so like let's say your order with tax and shipping comes up to $110 and then um, I'll just send you a check for $25 so that's how that works it's like cold hard cash pretty much um, it does bring down the value of your order though so if you're looking to get a class for free and you're not sure of how much you need to spend to make sure you still get the class for free, um, then just reach out to me and I can tell you. <laughs> I, I, you're usually good at like checking to make sure. Um, so congratulations, Lynn, that's so exciting. Okay, we'll do a drum roll here for these cards. This was from the celebration card class I did at the beginning of the month. First Thursday, I think it was in December. Ah, oh, January, so da -da -da, drum roll. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner is Carmen Melendez, you are the lucky winner of the rainbow card. You make me happy. Da -da -da -da. The sunshine, or it's like sunshine and, and catching butterflies, girl. Uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner, Sue Somerville. You had your name drawn for that one. Da -da -da. Awesome otters card. You guys look at this guy. Ready for it? For those that didn't see this class, boom. He's like, hey, girlfriend. <laughs> So if you missed this class, you guys, it was live on, you can catch the replay. It was from Thursday, the first Thursday, January 6th, I believe. This card goes to da -da -da, Teresa Cooper. You are the lucky winner of this cutesy little card. And last but not least was the Daffodil Daydream Bundle featuring the free designer paper and the special reason sentiment. And da -da -da, winner, winner, chicken dinner is a Mary Newhouse. Your name was drawn for this card. Congratulations to the three of you. So if you guys are new to me and just started following me and watching and you like these cards, you can see this pearl, this mother of pearl paper, you guys. Look at that, how snazzy that is. So cool. So you can watch the replay of this. Just go to um, my videos and my Facebook page 
and it was January 6th. So um, I will need addresses though for Teresa and Mary. Sue and Carmen, I definitely have yours. So that's that. And then we're gonna flip here real quick and see what's here. So we gotta go to random number generator and we will pull up that. Oh man, that's not gonna work. We need, hang on, start over. There it is, okay. Random number generator. I said I had 12 people that placed orders to get this for free. So I'll do 12. When I hit generate, a number is gonna pop up here. Number four, okay. Number four is Cindy Runtree. Cindy, you are the lucky winner of a prize from my stash. Uh, how it works is when you get your next set of cards for me for class, the door prize will be in with that. So if it's not next month, if it's the next month after, what I do now is I'll grab out a little postcard, put your name on it, say what the prize was from, and then the next time I have a shipment going out to you, that's where your prize goes in. I don't mail it separately. That was my condition for my door prizes is that they go in your next package that you get. So congratulations, Cindy. All right, so then I do see that uh, Deb and Deanne and Anne, a bunch of people told me where that... <laughs> Why couldn't I search for that video? But who knows? But I understand that I can go see it now and I will do that later once I've had a chance to look at all the names that commented that they shared. And I will announce who won that bundle at half off. I'll make connections with you then afterwards too. So what did I forget? That's always my million dollar question. Um, so we're halfway done with celebration, you guys. Um, I do have a celebration celebration that's coming up in March and you can earn a spot. A bunch of you have already earned a spot. One of the easiest ways to earn a spot is once you have $150 in orders from me, um, you get invited and we're going to make a special little uh, paper pumpkin photo box. So I'll flip down really quick and in case anybody didn't see this, um, you're going to get the rainbows and happiness paper. I use some abstract, but in essence, you're going to get some designer paper, a paper pumpkin box, a label and then enough sheets of paper to make this accordion style fold. And you can decorate it with pockets, you can decorate it with pictures, and however you want to decorate it. And I'll get you some little extra pieces to put with it so you can decorate and give you some embellishments to decorate. So that is the celebration, celebration the first week in March. And so um, you earn a spot by, um, there's a couple ways to earn a spot. One is by being a customer and supporting me with purchases, and it's $150 in orders in the two months. One is if you're on my team and you help two people um, um, join Stampin' Up uh, and um, add to your team. And then the other one is if you join my team and I do invite uh, my new team members who um, qualify. I, I like to help train and teach when you join my team and this is one way I can help train and teach. So, um, so uh, that's another way that you can be a part of the fun. So. Yay! All right. Well, you guys, I hear Tyler is here. <laughs> He's working out in the garage. I heard he got here like maybe 15 minutes ago. So uh, I'll have to see what he wants to do and <laughs> what he's up to. Um, I still have to pack yet <laughs> uh, and uh, um, do a bunch of things. And so it's going to be a late night, I, I have to believe. Um, but I will be getting up probably at four o'clock so we can get on the road. And um, you won't probably, you guys, I have to make a confession. I don't know if I'm going to do Tip Tuesday or not. I haven't decided. We get home like around 1. So most likely I will pop on at some point. Um, but don't hold me to it if I don't. <laughs> so I'm just putting that out there. But um, I will do my best to get live. I'm not going to pre-record anything before I go because that's just not going to happen tonight. <laughs> not going to happen. So all right, you guys. I think that's all I have. I kept it to just about two hours, so we did good there. And we got through a lot of stuff in the beginning. So if you guys joined in late, uh, you can always go back and catch the replay. And that's about it, you guys. So uh, again, reach out if you need anything. Um, I know with being on vacation, I won't be responding as quickly as I normally do, but I'll make sure to keep those posts and those emails and like messages marked that they're not read. That's my trick that I learned a couple years ago is to make things not read, even if I've looked at them, so that I know to come back to them. So. That's a little trick, so yes. All right, Deb Norman, I see your name that you just are watching again, so you must have got right back in. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick call. So, <laughs> all right, you guys, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. We'll see you later. Love ya.